Yeah, good morning, everyone. It's, good morning. Um, so this is a four-part series on I Married a Mystic as part of our Awaken the Heart Monday morning show. And um, yeah, it's such a delight to, that David's here this morning. So it's like the two main characters from the book. <laughs> um, so I don't Martin know and Persa are back. On the couch. <laughs> <laughs> They're back on the couch, right? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know how much or if I'll even read out of the book this morning, but a few more have come on. There's Luz has just joined us, probably from Mexico, but I can show everyone an LM virtual there. Here's... Here's the cover. This is like a draft copy of the book, and it's very exciting. It's being um, it's being printed this month, and yeah, the official book launch is is next month. So it's like, but now it feels really good to just share about it and just go into the themes of it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the buzz. We're right in the middle of the buzz before the book. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <sighs> so yeah, I think I'll just share a little bit about the book and then we'll just go with the flow and see where it takes us. Yeah. But this um a lot of what is in the book is actually the journals that I wrote um when I first joined David and um was sort of launched out of New Zealand to come over and be based in America and and just dive into this devotional life. Someone asked before, what is a mystic? Well, um, really a mystic is one who's devoted to God and just has this desire to to live in the experience of the Spirit. And that is the the most important thing, you know, on your heart and becomes your your sole purpose for living and and so I had felt this very strong call and had a very strong um, revelatory experience where I encountered the love of God. And in that moment, um, I knew that this presence of love and this presence of God was there like for the first time in my life. I didn't, I didn't have a religious upbringing and I didn't have, um, <laughs> makes me emotional just talking about it because yeah, it's like I didn't really have a path. I'd started doing a lot of inner forgiveness work. But that one encounter just was um, so powerful because it was a direct experience that God is real and this presence of love is right here, aware. And all I knew from that moment on that if I give my, gave my life over to wanting to be in touch with this presence and wanting to be guided by the Holy Spirit, um, I would be shown. I'd be shown everything and I would be told everything, where I need to go, who I need to be with. Um, and I, and from that moment on, it was very quick. Um, Jesus appeared to me in a meditation and said, I'll be your guide. Um, that was a surprise, a beautiful surprise. <laughs> um, and he told me within a week to move from where I was living and go up north and move in with my parents. And Jackie was, my mother was, of course, a miracle student. So she put the book in front of me and uh, I just listened. I was just in this um, practice of listening once I knew that I could listen, you know, inwardly rather than just be bouncing around off my own decisions. So I listened and I felt, yes, this is definitely your path. And within six months of studying the course, um, every day was just a, a prayer, really. It felt like the ink was wet on, on the page, like Jesus had written it for me the night before. And I would wake up and read my lesson, and, and every day was this experience of seeing what Jesus was going to bring me and how the day was going to unfold to show me what I needed to see. Um, and, and help me understand the lesson of the day. And then six months later, I was feeling pretty healed, and, and uh, Kirsten thought she would just head back off down to the South Island and live happily ever after in the town of Monica, go skiing and hang out in the organic coffee shop. And uh, Jesus had other plans. <laughs> it's funny how we have those fantasies. Susanna had the fantasy of sitting by the river 
yeah. and meditating her way into God and you had a Wanaka fantasy. I did. <laughs> it was strong. <laughs> You've probably seen Lord of the Rings. It's that area where it was filmed, so what the world calls breathtakingly beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so Jackie and her Course in Miracles friend Mia, they'd been studying the Course for two years by that point, and they had gone as far as they could with their study group. And so they started looking online for someone who was living the Course and could inspire them to take it deeper into the practical you know, application. And they found David online. And uh, so they wrote to David and, and asked if he would come to New Zealand. And he said yes. And so David flew down and and that was it, basically, once um, the Spirit just told me. And, and all of this kind of story is in the book of, of how the Holy Spirit spoke to me through all these people at this weekend retreat and, and said, oh, you're going to the Peace House with David. I said, no. I said, the next person came up to me, oh, I heard you're going to America with David. I said, no. And the third person came up to me at this weekend retreat, oh, I heard that you're going to the Peace House with David. I said, well, I'm open. The fourth person came and I said, mm. yeah, I think I am. And by the time the fifth person basically told me I was going to America, I said, yes, I'd better go and talk to David about this. <laughs> yeah, that was the first time I'd been in that part of the world even. I'd never been even near close to Australia or New Zealand. So uh, it was Jackie's close friend Mia, it was her uh, husband Lars, a Swedish name, two Swedes down there uh, who, who put the ticket on his credit card and uh, reminded me of that when I started talking about Divine Providence, how I lived in Divine Providence. He said, well, it's on my credit card. So, <laughs> it's, a, it's practical. This is very practical. It seems to happen in form, but you just start to attribute everything to Spirit, like the Holy Spirit and Jesus, uh, instead of the linear causation. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah, when you're really just tuning into that voice, you just pull it. You know, you pull it through everyone and um, and realize that it is the spirit that's guiding you. So, yeah, the book really. These um, once I we started traveling together and going on all of these adventures, and I was journaling every morning. It was a very devotional practice of um, first thing, just going straight for the couch and opening my course book, just saying good morning, Holy Spirit. Um, and reading my lesson, I was still going through the lessons for the first time then, and then just opening my mind to pray and and communicate and ask questions. And um, for me, when I first read in the Course, you know, basically, God's voice speaks to you all through the day. I just took that to be the absolute truth, and so I expected to hear God's voice speaking to me all through the day. I didn't, I just trusted Jesus 100%, so... Of course, that would be a mm -hmm. fact. <laughs> yeah. And so I just expected to hear the answers, and I did. So I would write and just have the pen and expect his answers to flow through the pen, and they did. So a lot of the journals are a part of the book, and then um, we were going on all of these adventures. And then what was really amazing is 10 years later, um, a number of people had said to me, you need, you need to write a book, you need to put these journals out into a book because they go through this kind of three year process of at the beginning going, wow, what is happening? Um, and then asking all of these questions right through to the end where there aren't any questions left and um, there's this consistent awareness of the Holy Spirit in mind and so as you go through reading them it's like being taken on this transformational journey um, and so 10 years later the, the moment came and I heard it's time to, to write it and then what was amazing is we'd just been on a, um, a big tour in Europe and then um, Ricky was, had been touring and she heard she was going to write a book and so she sent this message out saying I'm hearing to write a book but I, I don't have 
a book of my own to write right now. What does it mean? So I wrote to her and said, oh, do you think it could be my book <laughs> that you're going to mm -hmm. help write? And uh, she said, oh, my God, that's it. Yes, I definitely feel inspired. So 10 years later to the day, I found myself back at the Peace House in Cincinnati, sitting at the same desk where I would type up these journals and send them out on the mailing list to share them. And I was sitting there at the same desk, then writing the rest of the story for it to be put in a book. And 10 years later, of course, I'm writing it from this perspective of of humor, like, oh my God, <laughs> look at what I was going through at the time and feeling so much gratitude you know, mm -hmm. for, for now being able to see it, mm -hmm. you know, see the love even more fully that was there for me that at the time it was just going through it, going, wow, you know. Relive it through the journals. Yeah, like, yeah. Isn't it amazing how you come, when you hear a piece of music or you read a poem or you read a journal, it, you just write back in that same feeling and it's like it's, it's not, you haven't gone anywhere. It's mm. just an amazing experience. Oh, yeah. This book too is kind of like, I don't, some of you may have followed along with us for years, but uh, back in the, um, really in the early 1980s, uh, Robert and Barbara Varley uh, were traveling around the United States uh, sharing and extending A Course in Miracles and that little book was such an impact on for me and for you. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. this is more of an expanded version. This was, they were very devoted um, course students. I'd say more like course pioneers as far as actually applying the teachings to opening to guidance, listening and following very much like you said, where you were told, you know, you, you ask and you shall hear mm -hmm. and you expected it. So did Barbara and Robert was right in there with her, you know, the whole story. So when I look at the thickness of this book, it's that that was more of uh, of of the spirit using their story, you know, as an assignment to write it out because they weren't used to writing books and writing anything. Mm -hmm. And also it, it's like a more of a, an introductory starter uh, to a living a very devoted life. Whereas this really takes, I think, the reader um, from the intro, which is which is great, you need a book that can start where people can relate to it and really zooms it, I think, a little further towards uh, mysticism. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's quite, a, it's no ordinary book. I have a feeling that the Spirit will use this in many, many, many ways and it will become kind of a, a classic for going from the deep teachings, metaphysical teachings, and into the experience of what it's all about. So it's very experiential. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like an angel bath in terms of, with words. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah, it is. It's. I think it's like a, if you were going to call it something like a movie, you know, it's like a comedy, drama, a little bit of thriller, a little bit of romance. <laughs> it's got it's got everything in it because it's really going through like through the darkness to the light so it's very transparent it's you know if you want to know how to expose private thoughts like I was just learning as I was going because I I realized that if I had some judgmental thoughts in my mind and I was in holy relationship with David and the purpose of holy relationship is to um, be joined in this intimate experience of mind where there's um, total trust and oneness and agreement and you're so close that there's nothing between you, there's no veil between you. And if I started to have some private thoughts that I was holding back, I noticed that I would start to feel separate from David. And the longer I left them, the bigger the gulf would get. And and then I, I had no choice but to to share those thoughts and and through the sharing of them um, was met with innocence and again they just would drop and I'd be back in this experience of intimacy of mind mm. and innocence and so it really is a how-to guide of the living experience of walking through it no private thoughts no, no people pleasing thoughts, no people if pleasing. you have that how-to question like how do you do that really can I hear it one more time well there there it is yeah and it's, it's practical, but also I think it, it will take on a life of its own. You know how they say that with, with different things like books or songs, they kind of take off and travel 
like a feather in the wind, you know, like uh, an amazing experience. But what I'm seeing too is even with this book, now that it's just, you know, being printed or it will be soon coming to print, mm -hmm. but uh, Jeffrey's here, there's talk of, a, of an audiobook, there's mm -hmm. a buzz around here about an audiobook, and then yesterday there was talk of, uh, Deanna was talking about a, the screenplay and our friend Bruce out in California who was the screenwriter for uh, Ghost mm -hmm. and Time Traveler's Wife, uh, turning it into a movie. You know, it's it's amazing, the book hasn't been printed yet and already there's audio book and now talk of that. And So my suggestion was Diva Pramal, if you know Diva Pramal, was, should play Kirsten in the book. Although she's an amazing singer, I don't know about that. And then they were saying, what was for me was uh, Patrick Stewart. <laughs> and they, they reminded uh, uh, Deanna that Patrick Stewart's about, Stewart's about 70 years old now and have to play me when I was in my 40, 43 or something. And then they said, makeup, lots of makeup. <laughs> like days of future past. So we're having a lot of fun with it. It's like, it, it does seem to have a life of its own and it's, mm -hmm. it's going into orbit, but mm -hmm. we're here just, this is like the, the launch point before all that begins. Yeah. So it's kind of fun. Yeah, it is really <laughs> fun. And I've kept hearing, um, to go out and, and talk about the course and the practical application of the course and, it's really quite amazing because I, even it's in the, everything's in this book. <laughs> <laughs> but there was one moment where I had all of this resistance coming up and feeling really stretched and, and I was journaling with the Holy Spirit and I wrote, well, it's okay for David. He's a talking mystic. He's found his calling. You no, know, he's in the flow. He knows what he's doing and he does it so well. And, and I'm not a talking mystic. You know, that's not my path. I just want to pray and meditate and dance and you know, go and sit by the lake in Monica. Monica. That was a very strong <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> a meditating by in Monica. That was very strong. Yeah. <laughs> and in that moment, the Holy Spirit said to me, well, just relax. You know, you don't have to talk. You can just, just relax and, you know, what are you really afraid of? And then took me much deeper in that moment into what it was that I was actually afraid of. But the last, you know, s since the writing of this, the last 10 years, you know, our focus is not about being, it's never been about being a formal teacher or even being a Course in Miracles teacher. Um, for me, it's always been this desire to know God and to be with God and to continue to open up to, to this experience ever deeper in my mind. And then it might look like there's been a lot of teaching and speaking and holding retreats and holding gatherings, but they're really just the backdrop for this relationship with the Holy Spirit and, and deepening in the experience for myself. Um, but it's interesting now that this as this book's being printed, I'm hearing from from Jesus um, that I am to pick up the course again because I, I put the book down for a few years. Um, I didn't feel the call to be reading the words anymore. And I'm hearing really clearly to go out and to speak about the course and to speak about the practical application. And when it comes to these book gatherings, um, I've just been connecting with Ricky, who's been out touring with Eric, and already there's just all of these invitations coming in to go over to the East Coast and hold book gatherings, you know, Unity Churches, or gatherings like this, but to bring the book and make it available and, and speak about it. And I keep hearing that um, they're big gatherings, you know, they're bigger, and that just feels like some kind of tone that's being set for it. Like it's it's meant to go out now. The support for the practical application, I think, of the course mm -hmm. is that's what the call is now. And and I'm just getting this nudge from Jesus to go and meet that call. So it feels really inspiring because until now it's like, well, I'll just go if it's to meet with one person. And then if there's a few more who come together for the gathering, wonderful. And yet this feels like a different vibe almost. I go to a unity church, there's 75 people there, this is the call. You know, it's like an entry point in some ways into the how. You know, what does it mean to forgive? That question comes up yeah. so much, like how? And you can read 
you know, all these 12 step process, nine step process, 15 step process to forgive. But this journey is experiential. It's, it's forgiving is, is in the moment, actually being with what it is that's arising and seeing how this personality self is reacting or responding or believing yeah. in something that's not purely loving. Yeah. So. It's like a ripple effect of, because I think of all the years that I traveled around the United States and Canada in the 1990s, which is, yeah, it's like a couple decades ago or even more, but um, I did go to a lot of Unity churches and uh, they seem to be very welcoming. Uh, mm. It's interesting now, we've just got a book of ours, it's gone to like divorce publishing and, and they're starting to distribute it to a lot of Unity churches. So it's all kind of like mm. just letting the, the raindrops sprinkle, uh, miracles fall like healing rain on a dry and thirsty desert and, and signs of life spring up everywhere. And I think, you know, those, that idea comes from the Course and that's what's happening now. And, and this inner journey is nothing like you've ever experienced before at all. It's, it's really an adventure. It takes a lot of, of faith, of, of courage, of willingness, persistence. And yet the Spirit has so graciously provided with so many symbols mm -hmm. about travel symbols, relationship symbols, movie symbols, music symbols. They're just floods of symbols that really help us. And uh, we're both like walking testimonies to when you just allow the Spirit to use all the symbols mm -hmm. without any kind of uh, holding back, then it, it makes it for a rapid experience of, of experiencing union with God and connection to God and mystical experiences. You know, we both, you know, we use the term mystics, but we've had quite, uh, quite a lot of mystical experiences along the way. They were never the goal. They're more like the byproduct of the devotion where you're just transported, you know, into a, the realm of, of unity and oneness and, and actually revelatory experiences be, even beyond this world, beyond perception entirely. So I find that everybody's always asking for the practical and that's really been our journey is that it's not been a path of huge, long, hours of, of days and weeks of meditation. We've had our stretches in, in hermitages, no doubt, and we've had these deep experiences that seem to be given as well. But majority of it has been using relationships and using our our interactions uh, with with our fellow human beings as a as a backdrop for mind training. And it's it's great that it's it, it was journaled so thoroughly mm -hmm. and put out on our Awakening in Christ list. Uh, it's probably still archived mm -hmm. there on our Awakening in Christ Yahoo group, some of these messages. So you can go back to actually when they were coming out and sometimes we would occasionally, um, we'd get reactions and there'd be many questions coming in. So it was very interactive that way too. It wasn't mm -hmm. just journaling, it was mm -hmm. traveling and the journaling and the interactive mm -hmm. thing with people coming in. And then about a decade later now, it's it's kind of coming to life. It's getting its second wind mm -hmm. in a much broader way where I think it can reach a lot of people, mm -hmm. which is just symbolic again, because it's really just one mind, but we have to just trust and, and be used by the Spirit in ways where we listen and follow. And that's our pathway back to God is listening and follow. Mm -hmm. And so many miracles have come from just our simple willingness to do that. Like floodgate got opened up. <laughs> Unbelievable. Mm. It's been amazing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's just a, like the starting with one, like my, I prayed for um, to go home and to know a love that couldn't come to an end. Those were the prayers of my heart. Like um, when I first started with the course and and then I heard about holy relationship just briefly. I hadn't got that far in the course book yet to really know what holy relationship was. I don't think anyone can really know until <laughs> you have the experience of it. But um, yeah, I just prayed very 
that was what I wanted. I wanted to go home. And even in a country like New Zealand, everyone would think, wow, you know, I could be at home in New Zealand. <laughs> that would be so easy to live there and so beautiful. It's like, no, it's really not in this world. No matter where I lived, even in New Zealand, it, it wasn't it. I would start to feel unsettled again or like I didn't have all the pieces together. Something was always missing or someone was missing. And uh, so I, I was open to holy relationship and then I started joining with David and in this purpose, because really holy relationship is a purpose and it, it unifies it unifies your mind in this experience of prayer and action all together at the same time. And what I found myself feeling was that I was at home. I was at home in this purpose and at home in this function of serving God and at home in this relationship of um, fully accepting 100% that this is what is given me by God for my relationship with God now and uh, yeah and those prayers were answered and holy relationship it's safe to start with one and then what I found happened is this trust and this purpose of seeing innocence and and going for the Christ and practicing with seeing that everything that arose in my mind um, in that said something other than David is the Christ I am innocent was there for healing and then of course that transferred to being in that same purpose of holy relationship with others to the point now where I feel the same purpose is with all of my brothers is transferred to to everyone so really no one is outside of this relationship of holy relationship it's it's a purpose it's really a purpose it's my relationship with God and yet these relationships are where we get to see where there's fear of intimacy wanting to hold back wanting to protect you know or just outright um, projection of beliefs that are in the mind that they have to come up to be seen and and so within this context, it's, it's like a shared agreement that we have, like, yeah, let's bring it to the light. We have to bring it to the light. Like if anything starts, is held back or hidden within our mind, it, it literally pulls us away from one another and our trust with the Spirit. And so this whole purpose and practice of holy relationship is literally a development of trust. It is a development of trust with the Spirit. And, and as we keep taking each step, with it our relationship and trust with the spirit gets stronger and stronger and stronger and that, that veil of of mistrust um, um, just gets thinner and thinner until in the end you can't even believe it if if there's some thought that comes it's like oh that must be egoic what's going on what's going on in my mind it's it gets as quick as a blink you know yeah. rather than a gap mm -hmm. so, yeah I think people really need to relate to something for for the Holy Spirit to use it as a symbol. Mm -hmm. So in terms of relationships, I mean relationships in this world on the linear timeline are, are interpersonal. That's, that's what they're called. In fact, miracles have to come through, you might say, at the realm of, of interpersonal perception. Because if, if it was higher than interpersonal perception, there would be no need for bodies at all. If you, if you or mind was ready for spiritual vision for going into these mystical experiences and going into revelation, there'd be no need for uh, forgiveness. Literally, revelation transcends the need for forgiveness. It's literally what is. Um, you know, Byron Katie will always talk about loving what is and and what is. Revelation and light, light and love and joy is what is. So these interpersonal relationships are just symbols of the mind that's it's got distorted perception and basically needs help, needs a lot of help to attain the spiritual eye, the Christ vision. And so if we look back at history, just throughout history, 
you know, I think um, I, I think of some of Dan Brown's books, you know, because Mary Magdala is is a fascinating uh, figure in history. I, it was only recently, I think it was only probably a couple of weeks ago when I was telling everybody that the Pope flies around and he was up in his plane and and basically the Catholic Church, the Pope came out and said, listen, this whole thing about Mary Magdala being a prostitute is not, not real. Uh, and now it's come all the way to 2016 in the days of, of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump and the Pope is saying, the Catholic Church is saying Mary Magla wasn't a prostitute. It's like, okay, we got that corrected. So first you have a relationship that was quite fascinating over 2000 years ago between Mary Magdala and Jesus. And there's some interesting parallels. And then we mentioned the Varley book, which is quite interesting. Some of you are familiar with Disappearance of the Universe too. Arten and Persa, there's crude and rude Gary who's coming in <laughs> to try to open up with these kind teachers who uh, are very loving and humorous and joking with him. But basically, uh, um, Arten and Persa, there's another interesting pair uh, throughout history, mm -hmm. uh, more current uh, through Gary Renard's uh, notes and so forth and visitations. But but basically what you have is this desire to go for self-realization and enlightenment beyond the personal. And that's really what the Course is. I would say uh, when you get into those chapters from, you know, around 18, chapter 18 to chapter uh, 24, uh, transforming special relationships into holy relationship. Even in there, Jesus is, he's got a section called the healed relationship and he's describing it as two people mm -hmm. uh, in that section. So, so Jesus is very practical. He's channeled a course in miracles through, through Helen and, and Bill's help. And now we've got it in published version. And basically it's a fast track. I always say silence and relationships and a combination of the two is the fast track to God. The ego doesn't like silence and the ego doesn't like the Holy Spirit's use of relationships. That's like, <laughs> that's spelling the end of the experience of this ego in, in a rapid way. So it's not surprising that if the Course is your calling, is your path, that that these are the symbols that will be used. You know, and that's how it's gone for us. We've had hermitages, we've had relationships, travel, even now, you know, I'm getting ready to launch on a world tour in several days. Kirsten's feeling tours coming in, East Coast and maybe something out here at the West Coast of the United States. Um, both of us are quite open and spontaneous, so we don't even know always who's going to be traveling with us. I think uh, Francis will be with me for a time we know and Ricky and, and yet we're kind of like Peace Pilgrim, you know, she walked around, but people would join her for a while on the road mm -hmm. and walk with her and then they'd go, okay, that's, this isn't my calling, but it has been, <laughs> been a lot of fun. So, you know, it's interchangeable parts. You have people that, mm -hmm. that come in and we've had that over the years too. So it's, it's a glorious experience. It's just an amazing experience. It's very authentic. It's very uh, radical to the ego. I think uh, there will be people that will read the book, I Married a Mystic, and will go, whoa, I need to digest this like for you, taking down the, the journals. It was, oh, whoa, digest this one, and whoa, mm -hmm. digest this one. Mm -hmm. It was a lot, one step at a time. Mm -hmm. And I feel that's what's going to happen with this book. People are not going to pick it up uh, necessarily like you read a novel, mm -hmm. although I, I was talking to my friend Maria Felipe, Reverend Felipe, and I think you sent her a copy a and mm -hmm. she just, a chapter, she said it was, she used the word riveting. She said, you know, it's like riveting. I, I couldn't, my eyes were glued onto it and I, I had to keep reading and reading just from the chapter mm -hmm. uh, because it, it like, she said it just took me in and then it just, I couldn't put it down. Some people have had that experience with the Course too, mm -hmm. where they, they, it comes into their life and they can't put it down. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like it's God speaking to them and they're so thrilled and so happy mm -hmm. that this is so, it rings so true and resonates so well. And most have the resistances. I have a feeling people will have resistances too. Mm -hmm. And it's not like there's been any major publishers 
uh, not that we haven't shopped it around a little bit, but it's like there, there. I would say most major publishers wouldn't touch this book <laughs> with a ten-foot fishing pole. Uh, they probably, maybe two thousand yards away, they could view it. You know, like okay, be careful. There's something out there that could it will rock your world if you do it. But I do have a feeling mm -hmm. that that's going to be part of it. And yet, for those that really are drawn to it and hang mm -hmm. with it, I think it's going to be like totally life-changing. Mm -hmm. Blow your socks off, like knock your socks off, which is which is what we've prayed for mm -hmm. over the years. The Varley book knocked yeah. my socks off. Yeah, yeah. I memorized the book. <laughs> I mean, I recorded it as an audio book because it wasn't in print. Mm -hmm. And then I played it over and over and back in the days, this shows you how it dates my early travels, cassettes. I, I recorded it onto a cassette recorder and played it. And the young people are going, what are cassettes? <laughs> That's from an ancient time, a different era. <laughs> so it's exciting, it's very exciting. <laughs> See the sparklies. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I have a feeling this will it'll go on and on audiobook, <clears throat> translated into other languages. Yeah. And maybe even a movie. Yeah. Uh, because it's that it's that impactful. It really is. It's just it's it's a direct real real life, you know, in real time, written at the time, um, with the journals of going through it and so those who have read through it to help with uh, proofreading have had very deep healing experiences and found themselves on the floor or in, in mystical experiences. And I know that's what happened when some first started EVMT, you know, just found themselves going, whoa, you know, because I think this, that's all we can extend is the direct experience of what, you know, what, what it is, what this relationship of undoing the ego is and and that's there's such a desire to share that and extend that um, to keep staying with the experience for ourselves and to give it away and just know how how helpful it is and yeah I just love it I read it every morning in Mexico as part of the final proofreading with the community and and every morning we just come and be in prayer and and I'd read and I could only read half a chapter at the most a chapter because there's so much content in each chapter be like whoa you know when you've like filled up the bathtub with water and you've got to the top of the bathtub that's it it's full <laughs> you can't you can't put any more water in it yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's time to just get in and soak <laughs> in the warmth of it and very much like the courses you know when you you just read it that morning and it's like whoa oh how did he know how did he know that's what i need to read and um, and it's the same with the book. Everyone was there that morning going, oh, wow, this was my question, or this is exactly what I'm going mm -hmm. through. And so I feel this, just knowing that it's one shared awakening and this one shared healing. And when there's something that's to be extended like this, it's the perfect answer to the prayer. That, and we're all just here receiving the prayer together. Very, very grateful. <laughs> Look at the flow of birds. <laughs> lots we're, and lots we're of We're broadcasting hearts. on Periscope and there's just this stream <laughs> of hearts flowing. People are touching their screen. <laughs> oh. yeah. And that's what's so fun about this. Like it, it's the backdrop of, you know, of publishing a book. This is just the draft copy, of course. You know, and it looks like, you know, being an author and publishing a book. But we all know it's not about publishing a book. You know, it's not about about any of what it looks like it's about just this depth of the experience that's beyond it and continuing to nurture it you know nurture it and say yes yes now i'm willing let's go and keep taking the leap however that leap looks whatever it it looks like being so open in our mind saying okay this is this is what's coming in now yeah you know? yeah it's great to think too that that it's like with the course, when you go through the uh, the course, the workbook lessons, and so forth, and and you come to that part in the course where Jesus says, 
this course is a beginning and not an end and that henceforth you know follow the the directions of the Holy Spirit who will lead you onward. It's through prayer, it's actually through prayer, it's through a devotional life, it's through mind training and deep prayer and deep devotion that you awaken to this happy dream, this real world, this true perception that the Course talks about. And so, you know, over the years, you know, if you've followed along with me, you know, all the different ways we extend all the different genres, all the different tools we've used. If you followed Kirsten's life, you know, even, you know, picking up a guitar and, and, and learning a guitar in a year and recording an album and going on tour and these things, these are things that trained musicians, you know, it takes years, sometimes decades before those things happen. But those are all examples mm -hmm. of, of a life of devotion where you're being done through by the Spirit. There's no person that learns a guitar in a year and, and records an album and goes out on tour. You know, it's, that's very rare. There are even prodigy children, you know, that are like three, four, five, six, and you, you watch them play their instruments or sit, listen to them sing or play the piano and clearly this is not an accomplishment of time. They don't come in, you know, at five years old playing Mozart. <laughs> that's just not a common thing, but but the fact that it's happening, we could say, or the witness of that is showing that this goes back to the mind. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you could say from a reincarnation perspective that they're, they come into this seeming life with a highly developed skill or ability, but really we're starting to realize too, there aren't really past lives, those are all just symbols and metaphors and, and all of the symbols in this book are just symbols and metaphors. Um, I find that uh, people that have even lived a life in, for example, uh, a convent or a monastery, will say a nun or a monk could pick up this book, um, and and if they've had still some what if thoughts in their life after like five, six decades in the monastery, or the convent, and still any kind of fleeting, niggling things, they can pick this up and go. Oh, oh, they can experience the whole thing mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. through going on the journey with mm -hmm. this, because it's not about the form, it's about the desire in the mind to pray and listen and follow. And Jesus tells us even in the Course that you can learn from my experiences, we can learn from the experiences we've heard about Jesus in his life, we can transfer the training and, and, and achieve or accept the same lesson that Jesus Christ accepted the atonement and and it's even more fun when you start to think that everything is given the, the even the form of the curriculum is not something that you can pick you may think oh i can decide whether i want to be a buddhist in this lifetime so to speak or a christian or a hindu no it's all part of a prearranged plan and you don't ultimately even have a choice over the form of the curriculum you just have a choice to accept the content which is forgiveness in your mind, and the form will be what it already was. It's already written, and when you start to really give yourself over to this, you can feel a glee and a joy, like, oh yeah, everything has always been perfect, everything has been in perfect divine order, let all things be exactly as they are, all things work to, together for good. All those amazing ideas have always been in play. And it was just the ego mind that was trying to hold it off and say, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not that, I'll never be that, I'm going to be little, I'm going to be small, I'm going to be guilty, and it's just the way it is. And the Spirit is always caressing us, caressing our mind, saying, oh, child, choose again, mm -hmm. you're so much more. So I just feel like this is a celebration, we're, we're having celebration tours, celebration gatherings now, celebrating <laughs> a book publishing, an audio book coming, who knows, a movie, who knows what all. It's going to be kind of fun to watch it if it comes out as a movie though. We're, we've seen so many movies over the years to sit back and go, huh, did I really say that? <laughs> or was that some poetic license <laughs> that, that came through in the screenplay? You know? <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's, even that doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You you enjoy. You embrace everything. You 
We're yeah. not going for any accuracy in form. We're mm -hmm. going for the fact of God, the mm -hmm. fact of, of spirit, you know, not for the form. Yeah, that was one of the experiences in the book. We'd been traveling for a number of months and I had some um, competition coming up and these thoughts starting to feel like I'm just a handbag. I'm an accessory to the mystic. Everyone wants to hear David speak. Nobody wants to hear me. I don't have anything to say anyway, you know, all those kind of thoughts. And uh, so I feel this competition coming up and we'd be sitting there and David would be speaking and I'd have these thoughts, oh, I could have said that much better than him. Oh, I wish he would just pause so that I can speak. I have something really important to say. And uh, this went on for a couple of days. And then at the end of the gathering, he'd turn around and say, that was wonderful, wasn't it, Kirsten? Wasn't that a wonderful <laughs> gathering? I'd be like, oh, I don't want to burst his bubble. <laughs> and... Uh, and then, but somehow magically, you know, then I would turn around and someone would be walking towards me for a holy encounter and they would say, you know, you only said one sentence in that whole gathering, but that one sentence, it was exactly what I needed to hear. And I go, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, this is the kind of encouragement that I needed while I was going through all of this undoing of pride, which is such a big part of the journey. And then one night, this had been going on for a couple of nights, and I went into prayer with Jesus. I was up all night praying. You know, it was really up. Competition. I didn't know it was competition, actually. I just, all I could feel was, I'm just a handbag. What am I doing here? And uh, I went into prayer, and I gave the thoughts over, and then I did see, wow, it is competition. And I went into prayer and remembered a line from the Course, the ego is in competition with God. That's what it is. I could feel it. And I had this pop, and then I sat there and I received this download, and it felt like a two hour download from the Holy Spirit of this beautiful teaching. And then the next night, we went to a gathering, and we sat there, and David picked up the mic, introduced us, and then he spoke. And my download came out of his mouth <laughs> at the gathering everything that I'd heard, and it was this beautiful realization that there is one Holy Spirit, and in the moment, which is the clearest channel? The one that is <laughs> really open to receive and share the truth, or the one dealing with competition and undoing the ego and pride? <laughs> and of course, this is the channel that's most going to be used, and yeah, it was just, I was so delighted, and I just got to sit there and, and enjoy the whole thing and realize that ah oh, it's all for me again remember the purpose you're here for undoing you're here for the awakening process you're not here to be a teacher be a speaker get your two cents in all of that seems so you know superficial and put in its rightful place as just little doubt thoughts again and then i could relax and you know just again embrace just the gratitude like my god thank you thank you for giving me this backdrop for seeing this deep mm -hmm. healing in my mind yeah so. so you're getting the blessing of it you got to hear the parable and now here we are but but this is more the fruition of the holy relationship where we're just mm -hmm. flowing flowing and there's it's like that old song steely dan no static at no static at all f am no static at all. Now, Kirsten's just flowing in her joy, and, and this are parables from how many, 10, 12 years ago, mm -hmm. and and so it just flows and flows and flows, and, mm -hmm. and you know, and it's all involuntary, so it's very much like different times I've had translators where they're, they're actually channeling, they're not interpreting my words and translating my words, they're actually channeling the Holy Spirit in another language. Mm. So it's like two channels, one coming through in English and one in Spanish, or, you know, it's just all of our collaborations nowadays are just, mm. it's just involuntary flow. Mm. It doesn't matter, you know, who we're collaborating with, you know, who I'm out on the road with, or who you're out on the road with. We're seeing the witness of the fruition, the mm. fruits of the Spirit, mm of all that mind training and all that devotion, seemingly for years, but, you know, that's that's what it's about, too, the fruits. The fruits come from the Spirit, from the Presence, from the Holy Instant, and how glorious that is. 
And then how glorious it can also come through where people who are just at that stage of starting to let these dark thoughts up, these unconscious thoughts, can read the parables and go, oh, mm. thank you, this is God speaking to me mm. right now, or where I perceive I am, and, mm. and I just trust. That's the blessing. Isn't that mm. when we've had uh, people we emulate, when we've had mentors, when we've had heroes, we, we're inspired by them seemingly at the beginning, and then we go so fully into our desire for that experience that that whatever a teacher student falls away, leader follower falls away, we just merge in this experience of love and joy and happiness. So that's how it goes. You know, that's that's uh, what this is all really about. Mm. Hmm. Aesthetic at all. Thank God. His <laughs> static was loud. <laughs> and we're so worthy of being free of it and, and knowing that that's just what's being healed. You know, that's, it's got to be seen and we want to see it, to have it cleared. And yeah, and I, I just feel that this book is like a testimony to that it's worth it and it's safe. And the the outcome is is knowing our, you're innocent, you know, and knowing that we're loved, and knowing that God's will for us is to be free of every little block in our mind that could you know, somehow cloud our awareness of just this freedom, freedom and innocence to to be able to flow with the spirit in the moment, without doubt. Yeah, it's a mechanism. Some of you might have seen the movie that was based on Dan Millman's book, Way of the Peaceful Warrior. It's Dan and Socrates. And that's quite intense. It's a, it's a very, again, that's a rapid awakening movie, uh, just because it's, it's like a glimpse into a very intense teacher-student mechanism. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's nothing special about any of these symbols, but it's just showing that. So what's the difference between that and this book? Um, Dan Millman's story is that Dan, in that book too, uh, or that movie was Joy. Joy mm -hmm. came in. Mm -hmm. I think she's part of that, the way the Spirit used that relationship. But it's also kind of got a teacher-student aspect to it, and, and that's used in a very strong way. Because the guidance comes through Socrates so strong and so firm at times, and, and yet Dan's got the same choice that anyone has. Do I listen to this or not? Mm -hmm. Do I follow? Do I rebel? You know, we know these experiences. We've had them with parents, we've had them with partners, we've had them with teachers, authority figures, so to speak, in the world. We've all gone through this in, in a pretty intense way. We're not unfamiliar with those kind of uh, figures in our dream world, in those dream symbols, but that's what I think the, the book will be a gem because it's you're going to have the, some aspects of those things in there, and so it's more radical, more compressed. Um, and for many of you, though, that isn't that the prayer of your heart? You know, okay, Lord, I'm ready. Here I am. Let's 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 get going here. I'm ready to engage. Um, I'm I'm not willing willing to distract away anymore. I'm not willing to run away. I'm not really willing to hide from the Spirit anymore. I'm ready to engage. And that's really what this parable is about. You know, mm -hmm. from the beginning when you had head injuries from, what was it, a motorbiking accident? Mountain bike mountain, and skiing. Mountain bike and skiing accident and mm -hmm. coming from head injury, some kind of brain damage thing mm -hmm. and on disability, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a down on your knees, which Kirsten says, you know, she needed to be brought down on her knees by the Spirit, very much like Dan Millman. Mm, you know, yeah, there was an yeah. experience in that movie mm, right, too. Very strong-willed. Very strong-willed and it had to be broken. And then, where that movie Spirit, some of you have seen the movie, the horse movie Spirit, where he kind of wanders away from his, his group, herd of his family, and has mm -hmm. to go through some pretty extreme things. And yet, you know, all of us have gone through some of those things already, and then this book kind of gives the context where when you're watching a movie or reading a book, you're just once removed, but you can engage mm. the mind in, hmm, there's a lesson for me. Mm. 
in what's being played out in this book, just like with the movies. You know, it's a little bit safer to be sitting in the movie theater and watching Dan go through it with Socrates or with Joy, you know, and so I just feel like that's the value of all this. That's, that's our joy and we are so spontaneous and open, even though it may seem we, we still are guided to schedule things and, you know, it gives people a chance to take time off work or fit it into their busy schedule and, and come and get a taste and a whiff of, of this amazing healing. And then as they do, then they go, oh my gosh, this is what I've been praying for all my life. And here it comes. And I'm going to say yes to it. I'm going to go for it. And that's the spark that, that brings it all in, pulls it in. Thank you.